Hi, welcome to the demo of the RFQ scenario that we've, uh, we at GFT have built um, on top of the digital asset platform. And we've done this using the new demo language, which we're quite excited about. And today I'm going to take you through it. So before we do, we're just going to go through a couple of slides, uh, one slide about GFT. So we typically we have about a 5,000 man plus organization across 11 countries, about 400 million euros revenue a year, just to give you a flavor of who we are. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a uh, particular scenario, the, RF, the request for quote scenario. And it's a relatively simple one, but we think it highlights the, the um, specialty or special functionality of a DLT. And very simply, we have a, a customer, a broker, and a market maker. Today, we've, we've invented a neat little ecosystem. So we have Cinque Bank making a request for a quote on an equity option um, to Redis Brokers, who's going to farm it out to four market makers. And these are MLNZ, KLVR, Waldorf and Goldstein, and Saharan Investments. These will respond with quotes. Redis Brokers will select the best one and then return that to the buyer, who will then accept it. And that's where we're going to leave the scenario today and leave the post trade for some other time. Now, the um, should just point out that Waldorf and Goldstein may or may not, or one of the market makers may or may not uh, make a make a quote, it may abstain. And the other thing to say is that we've got three front ends here. So we have one for the buyer, one for the broker, one for the, one of the market makers. The other three of the market makers are going to be on auto quotas. So they're going to respond with a uh, price of 50. Um, but could, uh, that is a, an example of where we could bring AI into the sort of DLT mix. So just before we start it, we're just going to see what's the kind of the architecture, if you like. And very simply, we have a dis distributed ledger running across all six parties. So we've got three actual real parties and three auto quotas and the real parties have a front end and the um, the auto quotas are essentially bots uh, that respond listen to events off the ledger and respond and the like I say the ledger runs across all six parties this will be typified today by running it across three laptops so the quota all the um, auto quotas are actually going to run on the broker's laptop today um, but these trust boundaries show you kind of where the where the divisions would be Okay, so now we're going to have a go over here. I'm going to see if we can get this to, to go. So what I've got here is I've got the, the buyer in green, the broker, which is on this screen over here, in, uh, in grey, and then we've got the market maker in yellow over here. And what we're going to do is the, the buyer is going to make a request for a, a price on an equity option. And the first one, uh, so we're going to go over here, and we are going to make a request for an equity option. And I'm going to do it on Telefonica today. Um, uh, so this is a uh, buy, um, uh, buying a uh, European put option for 50,000 Telefonica at 8.24, expiring at the end of the year. So I create that, and what happens is this smart contract gets created on the ledger now, and it appears both on the, um, uh, the, the buyer, which is this one, and also on the broker, shown over here. Now, the, this is important for a permission distributed ledger because uh, the, at the moment, only the buyer and the broker see this. And the market maker, if you look, see, has no, in, no idea about what's, gonna ha what's happening yet. So the broker is going to take this and he's going to say, OK, well, first of all, I need to create a smart contract to send this out to people. So I'm going to send this out to four market makers. And so he creates a smart contract that does that. And then the, and as you can see, there is a, a pre-populated these drop downs, but the, we're going to dispatch this, this, this request out to four different market makers. So let's do that. We'll send it out to Sahara and to KLVR and Waldorf and Goldstein. And you can see they're responding. So their little headless bots are responding with prices um, already. And they, uh, they've been set up, so they're very simple bots. They just respond with 50. And I'm also going to dispatch it to ML, MLNZ. So over on this one, so I'm now take off my broker hat and put on my market maker hat. As you can see, the, um, uh, this has come up for MLNZ. Now, important to note that the information about who the, broker, who the buyer is over here is not passed on to MLNZ. So who sees what when is a very important part of the, um, the process with an RFQ, and it's a great use case for a dig distributed ledger. OK, so over here, we're going to make an offer for this one. Now, obviously, this person doesn't know what the other people have offered. I, I happen to know that they've all done 50, so I'm going to put it at 49, which means I should win it. And I'm going to submit that back. And so now the broker has got to a stage where he has four quotes, 
that he can, um, uh, can now process. And when we're processing them, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take the lowest in this situation, but this potentially could be MIFID 2 compliant and, and apply best execution. Um, the nice thing about put, um, executing this inside a smart contract is, of course, that the, the, the logic of it is exactly the same, obeys the same constraints as the data, i.e. it's fully available at the point where, um, uh, at any point in the future. So, so the logic is entirely transparent. So let's process that, and he's going to go away and uh, figure out which one's the lowest. Um, in this case, that's a very simple algorithm we got today. And it's worked out that ML and Z, IR, market maker over here, is the lowest. And we're going to send this back to the client. Now, in exactly the same way that the, 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 um, the market maker did not know who the buyer was, the buyer knows who the market maker is, but all the market maker knows is that it submitted a quote. So he doesn't know that he's won it yet, and he only finds out when he, when he accepts it. And this, this idea of working, reimagining the process to, to figure out who knows what when and um, uh, who can do what when uh, is, a, is an important, important thing. So if I look at the offers that have come back, because my, my request has now expired, because it's, um, or has been archived because somebody's um, the broker's made a request, I'm now going to accept that. And what will happen is that the, the client offer smart contract over on the broker and the, um, the quote smart contract on here will both archive and it will turn into a deal. So you can see that they will then disappear from there. And if I look over here, I, I realize that there is the four smart contracts that um, have ended up. So we have the two legs of the deal, which are see these the two legs of the deal here and here and the two fees one for the broker and one for the market maker as well so what's happened is we've we've gone through the whole workflow process accepted the quote and now ends up with the four active smart contracts which are done and agreed by all parties across here okay so that was the rfq scenario that uh, we here at jft had built on top of the um, digital asset platform using the daml language which we're pretty excited about uh, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, then please feel free to reach out to me at the details uh, below. Thanks. Bye-bye.